Thank you so much, Becky. You're the best. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with me today. My name is Larissa Laria, and I am currently the Neighborhood Library Supervisor at the East Flatbush Branch of Brooklyn Public Library. And today, my presentation will be on why the team that I work with at the East Flatbush Branch, why we decided to come up with an interim space in lieu of our library being closed, for renovations. What we'll also discuss today is why an interim space is needed, who's responsible for advocating for interim space, what can be gained from having an interim space, and what are some ways to advocate for broader community partnerships. So my goal today is to just go over all of the questions that I just um, mentioned to you guys and have fun with this. So let's get started. Sorry guys, um, about me, again, I'm the Neighborhood Library Supervisor at the East Flatbush Branch. I've been with Brooklyn Public Library for 19 years. And just a funny story, when I started, I said that I was only gonna be here for five years with Brooklyn Public Library. So here I am some way years later. Um, I began my career with Brooklyn Public Library as a clerk. And through the 19 years, I was able to work my way up to being a supervisor. And the experience has just been wonderful. I feel like I have grown as an entire human being working with Brooklyn Public Library because I've spent so much of my life there. So I'm just grateful for a lot of opportunities that I've been able to gain and be a part of. Um, I'm really excited working with staff to identify their needs and the community needs. And I work closely with the library circulation supervisor and the library information supervisor to identify these needs for the staff in the community. And of course, I'm a NYLA member. So that's just a little bit about me. I've been at the East Flatbush branch for three years. So before we really go into why we decided to have our interim space, I just wanted to tell a story and give you guys some history about East Flatbush prior to me being there, prior to me even being born for that matter. So the library is located um, at 9612 Church Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. Community advocacy in 1945 led to the branch being open on Linden Boulevard. The area at the time was populated by Italians and Jews after World War II. And just a sign of the changing times as far as library needs, the library expanded to its current facility, which is on Church Avenue in 1952. The branch was then enlarged from 3,200 square feet to 6,400 square feet in 1961. And then around that time in the early 60s, the area transitioned to being predominantly African-American. Another sign of the change in needs as far as library is concerned, in 1988, the library was demolished in order to construct a new library. Now I mentioned in a bullet um, previously that community advocacy led to a storefront opening. The Merchants Group of East Flatbush, which is similar to a friends group that most libraries have, played an integral part in a lot of the success of the East Flatbush Library. And they were impactful from the late eighties right up until we closed in 2016. So a lot that was going on in East Flatbush in terms of the collection, in terms of supplies for programming, in terms of just getting things in the door, the Merchants Group played a vital role. This is a nice picture of the Brooklyn Public Library East Flatbush branch in 1945. And this is before the square footage was enlarged to 6,400 square feet. So this is the library at 3,200 square feet. And if you guys can take a look at all the vintage marketing on the buildings, the vintage cars in the background, as well as the vintage parking, because in 2020, that is the thing of the past in terms of parking in New York City. So I just wanted to share with you guys what the library looked like back then. Which brings us to our present day, and not so much present day today, but up until we closed, which was in 2018. So in preparing for this presentation, I wanted to throw some numbers in there because as librarians, as clerical staff, as technology staff working in the library, we do a lot. So we say to our supervisors, oh, I don't need any more work. 
I have enough going on. Um, so when I pulled up some of these numbers, I was amazed at how much we actually did just in that physical year, physical year 18, which was from 2017 to 2018. So we had over 113,000 visits coming into East Flatbush with a record high in August of almost 12,000 visits. Now, Brooklyn Public Library is phenomenal and, and known for their programs. So we had 923 program sessions that year as well with an attendance of 15,000. Same with the PC sessions, over 31,000 PC sessions with the high in August. It seems like August is our peak, probably because of the summer months, which is understandably. And just going back to talking about programs, I just wanted to highlight two impactful programs that we had going on right before we closed. And these were grant funded projects from our incubator um, that Brooklyn Public Library puts on like every quarter, I wanna say. So we had Shine On Me, which was an initiative to assist people experiencing homelessness, where people were able to get job readiness, they were able to get help with how to find housing, and just even resources on where they could get a suit and tie to go on an interview with. Wired Empowered was another program that we had that was targeted to all of the teenage boys that we had at the library. So to keep them occupied, we aim technology at them and wanted them to just pretty much learn what technology is. So they were able to break down an entire computer PC and use the parts from the PC to construct a working radio. So that was a, not a phenomenal program that we're proud of. And both of these projects were based off of the community need. One would shine on me, people experience homelessness. That is a, a huge thing in New York City at this time. And we had a lot of teenage boys in our branch. So we needed to give them something. And we had a, a successful Workforce One hiring event in 2017 um, with about 30 attendees. And we know employment is another thing that is high on the task of things to get done. Ah, East Flatbush closing for renovation. So it's almost like everything was happening in that same year. So we got the news that we were closing in July of 2018, and we were allotted eight weeks to prep the branch for closing so that it can be turned over to um, DDC. And at the same time, our incubator round, I believe we were in round six at the time, came about so that we could pitch a program based off of our community needs. So we had a bookmobile that was providing coverage while the library was closed to the public and the staff was still able to be in the building. And with the staff being able to still be in the building, a lot of us were able to witness the lack in resources in terms of having a bookmobile to kind of supplement the fact that we were closed for renovation. So this was a huge motivating factor and why we decided to come up with the interim space. And the next slide is just gonna go into more details about that. So what was the community need for the interim space? As I said, the staff realized the bookmobile provided extremely limited services. Now I mentioned the square footage of the East Flatbush Library prior, which was 6,400 square feet. So the bookmobile was only 80 square feet. So that's a huge gap in terms of just space alone. And we were only um, offering services two days a week at five hours max. Unfortunately, sometimes patron and the staff were subjected to the outside elements. You know, the spring and summer is great. Everybody wants to be outside. But when the winter rolls around, you know, that can be a bit harsh for people to sustain. And sometimes there was no guarantee of service due to mechanical and maintenance issues with the vehicles. So this was a, another driving force for why it was just like, okay, guys, we got to get an interim space in and still be able to provide these services for the community. This is our Jazzy Bookmobile. And I just want to say that this is, it's not, a, I'm not trying to knock bookmobiles and, and slander bookmobiles by no means. Bookmobiles are extremely useful for what they're useful for, which is community fairs, you know, block parties, school fairs, 
outreach events, things of that nature. But unfortunately, a bookmobile of this size, it's 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 pretty hard to supplement services when you have a building that's been open six days a week between eight and 10 hours a day and 6,400 square feet. Like that's, that's a lot. And then to go to this. So not a knock on bookmobiles. Um, our bookmobile is extremely jazzy thanks to marketing. So the bookmobile was located in front of branch when we were closed on Mondays and Wednesdays from 11 to four. And patrons were able to check out materials, return materials, and be able to get library cards. So they were able to get the basics, but unfortunately what was lacking was of course, access to Wi-Fi, access to being able to jump on a computer, access to programming, and access to a larger collection. Those were some of the pitfalls. Um, so once we decided that we were going to um, pitch for a marketing, I'm sorry, once we decided that we were going to pitch to have an interim space, we used the bookmobile to market to the community what we had in store and what we were trying to do. Just so that that could let them know, like, we're still here for you. We're still trying to get the ball rolling to offer um, extended services for you guys. Which brings me to the slide of who's responsible for advocating for interim spaces. So. One thing we learned, the staff. The staff is responsible because they're frontline staff. They're the first to see what is lacking and what can be gained from having an interim space. The next um, integral part is the community because they're the ones, unfortunately, that are experiencing the deficit of losing services due to their library closing. And administration is also responsible because they they have the bigger picture in terms of meeting access and having access available to patrons based off of their mission goals, based off their strategic plan. So administration is the bigger picture in all of this because their biggest thing is you want to provide access to the community that the library serves. So these are the three integral parts of who's responsible. And it doesn't have to be all three at one time. It can be how the staff identified the need. We were able to identify that there was a lack in service. And then the community in coming on the bookmobile, they expressed concerns as well, which motivated us even more. We, we kind of had that support and we had like that leverage, like, oh, the community is, is, is concerned about this. And then pitching it to administration, which aligns with their strategic plan, providing access. So it was just like a seamless collaboration, so to say. So I talked about interim spaces a lot, so I just wanted to just dive into what an interim space is simply. And that's just pretty much a space that's occupied temporarily in order to provide a service. And we had many examples of interim spaces because we had a few libraries that closed prior to us. Um, Rugby, which is our sister branch, they're located probably about 10, 15 minutes from us they were able to provide trailer service on site of where the library was at. They have like a, a nice garden in the back of their library and they were able to get a trailer to still be able to provide services. The Brooklyn Heights and Sunset Park libraries both were able to set up interim spaces in nearby buildings for where the library is currently located at. And all of these branches closed between 2016 and 2017, and then we closed in 2018. So more motivation for East Flatbush to pitch for an interim space. And what was made available in all of these spaces? A wide collection, computers, Wi-Fi, and bathrooms. Bathrooms are a huge part of libraries these days and probably every day since libraries have been funded. So here's a picture of the rugby's interim space. Like I said, this is in a trailer and the picture on the left, you guys can see the access to computers, which is huge. So they have a lot of computers. They have about 12 computers located in a trailer. And then on the right, you can see some of the collection. The picture doesn't show the entire collection. So they were able to still have access to a collection. This is a picture of the Brooklyn Heights interim space where they have a vast, you know, 
access. Well, patrons have a vast access to a collection. They have seating area. They have bathrooms, you know, and they also have computer access, laptop access, and Wi-Fi access. The next slide is of the Sunset Park Library. And this is my favorite outside of our interim space um, because the blue, it just stands out. That's BPL's like marketing colors. So it just looks really amazing. And they have access to a lot of space in this interim space. And they also have self um, checkout laptops that were made available in this space for their community. So that's just some examples of some of the interim spaces. So in order to make this idea a reality, it's a lot of people we had to get buy-in from and to get approval from. And it started with the branch staff, the staff of the East Flatbush branch. We had to sit down with them and let them know what our intentions were. And it was simply, we need to do something for our community because the bookmobile, unfortunately, is not enough. And being able to use the example of branches that closed prior to us and the interim spaces that they had made life easy for us. And as well as them experiencing some of the concerns that the community had because they actually worked on the bookmobile themselves. So they knew, you know, what some of the concerns was. So it, it was an easy transition to get the staff on board to be a part of us pitching for an interim space. Our regional supervisor, which is my immediate supervisor, I had a conversation with her. It was good to get her on board so that she can also pitch the project on the level that she is on as being my supervisor. So she can talk to her supervisor and so on. We needed to sit down with administration and we did that because we knew we needed technology in the interim space. So since we were closing, we figured, okay, let's not waste this technology in terms of our computers, our printer, our copy machine, things of that nature. So we wanted to just talk with IT to see what can and can't be done as far as the technology being moved from our branch to the interim space that we would use. Unfortunately, we weren't able to use the technology because it was configured solely for the building. But in a later slide, I'll show you guys what we were able to do. And custodial and maintenance played a huge part because we needed to make sure that they would willingly you know transport our materials and our collection whatever we needed to the interim space um the biggest person in all of this is our partner who we wanted to have the interim space at so we sat down with brookdale hospital and brookdale hospital was the location that we chose because they literally were five minutes away from us so we sat down with them and that was a process only because hospitals are extremely busy. They have a lot going on. So they have a lot of meetings like day in and day out. And the contact people um, that we sat down with was the vice president of external affairs, Kerry Edwards and his team. So he's always busy and always on the go. So it took a couple of meetings or uh, let me go back. It took several phone calls before we could even get to a meeting just to sit down with him, just to let him know what it is that we were trying to do. And of course, we needed to get funding from Incubator in order to make this a success. So just talking more on the partnership that we had with Brookdale, we pretty much leveraged an existing relationship we already had with them by part when we participated in several outreach events that they had. And one of the coordinators at the hospital was able to come out and speak at one of our staff meetings to let us know the different things that Brookdale Hospital had going on. So we kind of really, really leveraged that relationship and said, this is what we want to do. You know, we think it would be dynamic and it actually, it worked. So we just piggybacked off of a relationship we already had with somebody in the community. And the library and the hospital is the biggest hubs in the community. It's mainly residential and small businesses. So it was also a no brainer for us to partner together to make this happen. The opportunity for the library was to reach new audiences being in a hospital and to strengthen community partnerships and pretty much advocate for our library needs. And then the opportunity for Brookdale was they were able to offer unique services not traditionally accessed in a hospital, which is a library. 
there were a lot of people involved with this project. Um, like I said, to go from idea to reality, a lot of people had to be involved. And a lot of people within our organization departments, the IT department, you know, they had to come out and test the technology to ensure that everything would work, um, what would go, what would get rid of, things of that nature. And our marketing team, our marketing team did a phenomenal job um, drafting up flyers, posters, banners, so that we could promote what was coming at our community board meetings, at the local businesses in the area, and even at some of the schools. And we were just thankful for that. Our CPFM, Capital Planning Facility Management Team, moving the equipment around for us. We had to get them on board. Our circulation department and enterprise apps did an amazing job with our collection in terms of the loan rules. Now, Brooklyn Public Library has a floating collection. And what that is, if you check out a book in one branch, you're able to return it to another branch and that book becomes that branch's book. So because we had a small budget to work with, uh, we needed to ensure that our books didn't float and that they would come back to us. So the search and enterprise apps work together to ensure that we can have that happen. Our strategy department did an amazing job adding us to their Brooklyn stat database so that we can track all the stats that were going on in terms of people walking into the hospital, using the computers, um, checking out a book, signing up for a library card. So strategy, like I said, did an amazing job with that. And our general counsel, she drafted up the contract that between Brookdale and Brooklyn Public Library. So these were all of the people included in the collaborations that we had in order to make this a success. So one would think, what is needed in the interim space, right? What equipment and what supplies? Now I mentioned before our maintenance group being willing to transport things for us. So because we received the funding, and I don't think I mentioned that, we were able to get the grant from Incubator and that grant is um, provided by the Charles H. Remsen Fund. We decided we were still in the building at East Flatbush before the staff had to exit the building. We saved a large portion of our collection because we knew we were gonna use it in the interim space. In addition to retrieving books from other locations within Brooklyn Public Library. Some more equipment we had, laptops and iPads that we previously acquired from our councilwoman Inez Barron that we were using for about a year and said, this is a no brainer to take this equipment over to the interim space because we all know how much technology can cost. So that saved our budget tremendously. And what we purchased with the actual incubator grant, I'm sorry, was a small collection. And when I say small, I say small. Um, I've never worked behind the scenes in terms of like processing books and ordering books. And it was amazing to see how much money could get you so little books, so to say. So hats off to our collection development um, team and, and the ordering that they do because it was very interesting just learning that process. So just to continue on, we printed, we purchased a wireless printer, MiFi devices, bags, office supplies, and then of course, marketing materials. And we wanted to use a wireless printer and obtain MiFi devices because the hospital's HIPAA laws are extremely, you know, rigid and we couldn't connect to their network. So we had to come in with our own network in order to use our technology to provide the services for the patrons coming into the building. And Shelvin, Shelvin was another big saver for us. Shelves are expensive. So at the time, Brookdale Hospital's medical library was going through a renovation as well, and they were able to offer their shelves to us. And we happily and hurriedly took the shelves. <laughs> so this is just our opening day. Um, we had News 12 in attendance who did an article um, on us opening the site. They called us a satellite library. We call it interim space, but it's all the same. We had an amazing ribbon cutting with Brookdale Hospital and Brooklyn Public Library. And the picture to the right, hopefully it's to the right on your screen, if not to the left on your screen, the way I'm viewing it, um, is the team. We, we are the supervisors. Myself, you already know who I am. Matthew Irizari was the is the library circulation supervisor. 
And Nicole Bryant was the library information supervisor at the time, but she recently received a promotion. So we are the three that pretty much brainstormed and did the leg work and did the spiritual work and everything to get this started. And I'm extremely thankful for them because it was almost a time where it wasn't going to happen because it was just so hard, just like connecting with Brookdale Hospital, not because they didn't want to be involved, just because they have so much going on. So kudos to them for giving me the reassurance that we needed to seriously stay steadfast with this project. And this is our space. This is the East Flatbush interim space, and we called it Library in Transit. Um, as you can see, that's our jazzy banner that marketing created for us that pretty much said providing library services, including books, research, printing, internet, email access. So come on in. So that was right outside the space just to catch everyone's attention. You know, the hospital has staff, they have visitors, they have patients. So where we were located was right on the ground floor, which was an amazing space for us. And if I could just touch a little bit and go back and say our intentions initially was just a table on their floor of the hospital, just so that we could remain relevant in the community because we did a lot of work at East Flatbush. So we didn't want to lose a lot of our patrons. We didn't want to lose a lot of our partners. We just wanted to have somewhere to be just to say the library is still providing services in addition to the bookmobile. And they actually offered us an actual space in their, in their hospital. So we were just extremely like happy about that. So you can just see we were able to order a bar stool and tables for our laptops so patrons could come in and enjoy the services. We just had a table set up of staff picks, books, different things going on in the hospital, different things going on um, throughout Brooklyn Public Library. And we have one of our patient, patrons that you can see in the back browsing our collection. And I believe she was someone that always put books on hold for her daughter. So she was a, a patron favorite, so to say, because she visited us a lot. So this was just a space. It was small, but it was, it was enough because we were able to offer Laptops for people to use, people were able to print, people were able to put books on hold, um, people had access to a larger collection, not a huge collection, but definitely a larger collection. And these were all things that weren't made available on the bookmobile. So just to give you a tidbit about that. So some of our outcomes in terms of this project, our opening day was October 15, 2020. And that day we had 248 people come out and see the space um, ranging from staff, from some of the patients. They even brought some of the patients down, visitors, just people walking in and out because the hospital has a cafe. So people come in just for the cafe. So that, you know, garnered people's attention like, oh, what's going on over there? 20 laptop sessions, and we signed up about 60 people for library cards. Now, the total stats from October 2019 to March 2020 was 394 library card signups, 1,098 books circulated, and 150 laptop sessions. So the dates that's here, um, unfortunately, we had to shut down because of COVID in March, and we haven't been able to be back yet. That's still something that we're working on. So these numbers are just for about six months. And I feel like this is a good representation of how well we were doing. And had COVID not happened, nothing we could do about that. Um, I'm confident in saying I feel like we would have far exceeded the numbers that you guys see here. And this is the staff of the East Flatbush Library. Um, we worked really hard on this project, really promoting it and just coming up with the idea and wanting to remain relevant in a community, wanting to give more to our public and not just, you know, use the resources that were made available, but coming up with our own way of making sure that they still were able to access what they were able to access prior to us closing. Maybe not so much on the same level, but main things, technology, Wi-Fi, collection, holds, just being able to place holds is a huge thing with Brooklyn Public Library. So we're grateful, I'm grateful that they were even on board with the idea. 
in the first place and it was a success. And I'm hoping that once everything calms down that we'll be able to get back in the space and continue to do good work. This is my contact information. If anyone is um, interested in getting in contact with me, Larissa Laria, it's L Laria, L L A R R I E R at D K L Y N library.org. If you ever needed to reach me, feel free to reach out. Thank you. So Larissa, we have some questions and I just wanna tell you too, there are so many wonderful comments. Everyone is just, impressed love this i hope to do this eventually at my library bravo damn this makes me so happy you were able to do this um so just Yay. wanted you to hear some of those comments um one question we have is were patrons allowed to place holds on items you may not have owned at all if so how did you work out the interlibrary loan system working in this space or did you just limit it to books that you had in your collection so that's a great question, and I'm happy that you asked that. Patrons were able to place holds on any items within Brooklyn Public Library. So they weren't just um, able to use our collection. If we didn't have something, we were able to get it from them because nine times out of 10, another library within our system had the book. Now, as far as interlibrary loan, we really didn't have to use interlibrary loan because as I said, we were able to place holds throughout our own system. So it worked out where we were able to place holds um, within Brooklyn Public Library. Great, and if we have any more questions, we've got some more very inspiring, amazing work. Um, this even helps expand my thinking for a while we have limited service due to COVID, thank you. Awesome. Unbelievable innovation. Thank you for the suggestions and ideas. Um, You're welcome. Here's another question. Love the idea of using the bookmobile as a marketing vehicle, quite literally. Did you do drive arounds to spread the message? I think they mean about like you're moving and in the interim library space. No, we didn't do drive arounds um, because the bookmobile sole responsibility was to just be you know, in front of the library for the hours that we were allotted. And because we had other closures, we had to share the bookmobile. So it really wasn't a lot of time to be able to drive around. But we walked around, you know, we did the footwork and we went to community boards, went to schools, went to the local businesses and really promoted the project that way. So we didn't drive around, but we walked around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, anyway, you can get the word out, right? Right. Um, we, have, we have a little more time. So if anybody has any other questions or thoughts that they want to share, just pop them in the chat or you can raise your hand and ask it live on Zoom. I will just say that um, this idea, with the motivation of other branches that closed that had interim spaces, we also came up with the idea because initially we wanted to do outreach in the summer and spring months, you know, when the weather is nice. Mm -hmm. And we decided we wanted to do pop-up libraries. So that, we just piggyback off of that. So we have the idea to like have portable shelves set up like in parks or set up anywhere so that people can really check out books because um, we have my, not my five devices, but we have devices that we can travel with um, as long as it has a Wi-Fi connection. So we wanted to see how we could um, expand our access to the community. And that's pretty much what also was the motivating factor to have the interim space. Great. Um, so we do have a question on Zoom. I'm going to unmute uh, T. Evans and you can go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Larissa. This was a wonderful presentation. Hi. I'm Tina. And um, so my question is, do you see interim spaces for the future in, in, um, in hospitals moving forward? Or is this something that you recommend that libraries across New York State continue doing or to expand on? Um, I just wanted to know your thoughts. Yes, absolutely. Um, because li libraries and hospitals, I would think in Brooklyn, there are huge hubs within the communities. So I think it would be an amazing idea to continue that partnership and not just with us working in Brookdale Hospital. There was another project that um, Incubator funded where there was a hospital doing storytelling with Brooklyn Public Library at the, I believe they were at the Kings County or down, downstate hospital. So 
it's definitely a need for libraries to get into hospitals as long as they're willing to have us. And Brookdale was willing to have us, so I'm pretty sure other hospitals would be willing to have us as well. And we have a couple more questions from the chat, uh, Larissa. What have you done now that COVID closed the interim space? Do you continue to provide services through this branch? No, at this time, we're not providing any services um, through this branch. Currently, Brooklyn Public Library is working in phases to put all of the branches back online. So because of COVID, it kind of shut everything down as far as Brooklyn Public Library is concerned. But mm -hmm. um, administration and the branches are working really hard to get branches back online. They currently just have um, lobby service going on in a couple of libraries. So unfortunately, because we were in a hospital, there's some clearance that needs to be cleared <laughs> so that we can um, begin services again. Um, and uh, again, from the chat, how did you get your board to go along with this idea? Well, we got the board because, like I said, Rugby Branch is also in our community board and they were closing. They were closed already. I'm sorry. So they were actually appreciative that we came up with the idea to have interim services because they were a little, um, I guess, annoyed that another library was closing in their community. So it worked out in our favor to pitch the interim space because they thought it was a huge deficit as we did and as the some community members did as well. So it was very easy to get the board on board. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, another one from the chat. Um, Flatbush is definitely a changing community, AKA gentrification. Has that impacted your library services or did you keep that in mind when thinking about post COVID services? It hasn't really impacted our services. I mean, I could say it has, if anything, it's impacted us in a positive way where we're getting more people coming in the doors, more people are moving into the neighborhoods. And just as I did with the history, the change in times, you know, we're trying to meet the change in times of gentrification. So yeah, I hope I answered that. What was the other part of the question? Um, let's see, where is it? Um, Flatbush is definitely a changing community, AKA gentrification. Has that impacted your library services or do you keep that in mind when thinking about post COVID services? Oh yes, definitely something to keep in mind during post COVID services. Um, oh, here we go. Um, thank you for presenting. Was the location of the books in the interim space updated in, in the library catalog? Yes, they were updated. Um, we received them from our book ops team, who's our collection development team. So everything was updated and they were brand new books that we had the opportunity of ordering. So everything was um, new for the community and for people coming into the interim space. And we constantly kept the books updated. And because we had a small budget, we constantly put books on hold within our system so that we can constantly have books on the shelf since our budget was kind of small for the collection. And um, this is just a, a thank you. Thank you, Larissa, for your vision and passion and that of your whole team to make this happen for your community. A wonderful example of why collaboration and looking outward is so important for libraries of all sizes. Thank you. Um, if, so if there aren't any other questions, we'll just we'll end a little bit early. Um, I do wanna, I'll plug a couple on-demand programs that I think might kind of a little different, but might tie in. There's a great um, DIY library design about kind of redesigning your library when you don't have the money for a designer or for, you know, all of these things. Um, it's called DIY library design in the on-demand catalog, which is really great. And um, if you get a chance, you can also watch all the awards speeches in the on-demand catalog. And again, this will be recorded. And um, yeah, if there aren't any other questions, thank you, Larissa, so much. This was. I'm being spoiled by getting to watch everything and learn so much, but what an outstanding, wonderful program. Thank you for sharing. I, again, the chat was just blowing up with everyone being thankful and grateful and super impressed. So thank you so much. Oh man, thank you. Thanks for having me. And I'm thankful for everyone who participated um, in this presentation today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. And uh, just so you know, the Lunch and Learns start at 12 o'clock. So you've got a little bit of time if you're going to attend either the YSS Empire State Award Luncheon or PLS's Author Author with Lester Spence. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>